Hey y'all, uh, so I said I'd post another short video uh, talking about odds ratios. Um, you don't really need to know anything more besides what was in the previous uh, lecture, but typically I go into more detail about uh, odds ratios and spend more time talking about risk ratios too. You won't need to know those at all. That's just something extra that I like to talk about because you see them all the time in, uh, in medical journal articles and things like that. Um, so anyway, this is totally optional. But if you if you wanted some more practice with odds ratios, or you just wanted uh, a you know deeper intuition into what these things actually are, um, have a look. I mean, I don't think it'll be more than five minutes or so. Cool. So uh, typically, it's nice to think about odds ratios in a setting like this, where you have like two categorical variables, right? Maybe you're looking at you know, the probability of getting a disease given that someone was exposed or not exposed to something, right? Um, I guess this is this is an example I always use, and it's very vague, but you can kind of, current events have a way of mapping themselves onto things, don't they? Um, anyway, so an odds ratio, right? <clears throat> it's just what it sounds like. It's a ratio of odds, as we talked about previously. Um, <clears throat> ah, man, allergies today. Uh, that's all it is. So, for example, we might look at the odds of getting the disease if you were exposed compared to the odds of getting the disease if you're not exposed, right? Um, and how do we compute those odds? Let me see if this is going to work. Cool. So in general, right, like odds ratios, yeah, they're just used to quantify the strength of association between two categorical variables. The bigger it is, the stronger the association, right? If your odds ratio is one, that means there's no, you know, getting the disease or not, it doesn't matter whether or not you're exposed, right? There's no, there's no difference. When you compare the odds of disease if you were exposed to the odds of disease if you were not exposed, if that ratio is one, then they're the same, right? Anything divided by itself is one. Um, cool. So we can compute an odds ratio, right? And right now, just pretend these little lowercase uh, Latin characters here represent counts, right? So maybe A people were exposed and got the disease. These are just frequencies, right? Um, so we'll compute the odds of the disease given that you were exposed over the odds of the disease given that you weren't exposed. And that ratio will be an odds ratio, right? It'll tell you how much, uh, how much greater the odds are of getting the disease if you were exposed than if you were not exposed. Um, and again, so right, so Odds is just a probability divided by one minus that probability. Um, so for example, we could get the probability of the disease if you're exposed. So given that you're exposed, that probability would just be uh, A divided by A plus B, right? Because A plus B people are exposed. A of those people have the disease. So that'd be in the numerator there, right? And then you just have one minus that same quantity, which in this case is just B over A plus B or 1 minus uh, A over A plus B, either way. Um, yeah, so that whole, again, that whole denominator would just be B over A plus B, or you can do 1 minus A over A plus B, it doesn't matter. Um, but that's the odds of disease if you were exposed. If you're not exposed, then we have a different denominator, right? For those who are not exposed, that's this row, the second row. So the probability of disease if you're not exposed, well, that's C, out of C plus D, right? Because C plus D are not exposed. So that's your numerator here. And then this denominator, this one minus C over C plus D, that ends up being D over C plus D. But either way, right? You can see it a bit more clearly um, if the algebra isn't, you know, jumping out at you. Um, like this, right? If you have A over A plus B and one minus A over A plus B, well, B over A plus B uh, plus A over A plus B has to be 1, right? So, anyway. And what's cool about this is that if you write this out, it simplifies. So this odds ratio actually simplifies nicely down to A over B divided by C over D. So that's the odds ratio here. This one over this one divided by this one over this one. Uh, that shortcut won't always work, right? So, so be careful. Don't just apply that, right? It's a good idea to write it out and simplify it every time, because depending on what the question's asking for, I mean, you could conceivably ask for 
what are the odds of exposure given you have the disease, right? You could flip it on its head. Uh, and this wouldn't be the answer to that. Um, so just be careful with that. But let's do a concrete example, right? So this is just sort of the, the math of it. Let's say the disease in question is uh, a myocardial infarction. Let's just say it's, it's this medical event. And then let's say the exposure is whether you're a smoker or a non-smoker, right? And these are counts. And these are actually, this is data from an actual study. So they surveyed a bunch of people, found 355 uh, were smokers who had myocardial infarctions, uh, 3140 were smokers who did not, then 140, oops, hello, 140 were non-smokers who had myocardial infarctions, and, and 2507 were non-smokers who didn't have a myocardial infarction, right? So uh, it's a pretty big sample. It was a, a pretty good study. Um, so take a minute and think about it. What are the odds of a myocardial infarction if you're a smoker? How could we get those odds? Well, what's the probability of a myocardial infarction if you're a smoker? Well, there's 355 smoker and myocardial infarction, right? So out of all the smokers, 355 had a myocardial infarction. So what's the total? 355 out of 355 plus 3140, right? So 3495. That's the probability. So it's just 355 over 3495 divided by 1 minus that, right? And uh, that ends up simplifying, right? Because these two denominators are the same. So you have 355 over 3495 over 3140 over 3495. Well, that's just 355 over 3140. And the odds of a myocardial infarction, if you're a smoker, are 0.113. And that sounds low, but what are the odds of a myocardial infarction if you don't smoke, right? You need something to compare it to. That's the whole point of an odds ratio. These odds are kind of meaningless if you don't have something to compare it to. Um, an odds ratio is comparing two different odds. So what are the odds of a myocardial infarction if you don't smoke? Well, the probability of a myocardial infarction if you don't smoke is just 140 out of uh, 2647, right? 140 out of all the non-smokers divided by uh, 2507 out of 2647, right? Or you might be able to think of it better if I just show you the math, right? So we're doing the probability of a myocardial infarction, given that you don't smoke, over the probability of no myocardial infarction, given that you don't smoke, right? And again, this just reduces to 140 over 2507, just like this one reduces to 355 over 3140. Again, slow down and like actually do the, like walk through the math, right? This is nothing that we hadn't seen in the previous unit, just two conditional probabilities, one on top of the other. But look, these odds are much smaller, right? They're less than half as big as the odds of a myocardial infarction if you do smoke. So the odds ratio just divides this odds by this odds. That's all it is. Uh, so in this case, the odds are of a myocardial infarction are two times uh, greater if you're a smoker, or not greater, right? So language here can be tricky. The odds are, are if you're a smoker, the odds of a myocardial infarction are 2.02 .02 times what they are if you don't smoke, right? This odds ratio is just comparing these these two odds. That's all it's doing. Cool. So there's a, deep, there's a reasonably strong relationship there, right? That's all an odds ratio is. Um, and this, oh, what happened here? Yeah, so this actually comes from this study right here. Uh, and you know since the odds ratio is greater than one, right, smoking increases the odds of a myocardial infarction. Uh, but we don't really know, we haven't talked about, you know, any sort of a test for an odds ratio or, uh, right, like we haven't talked about putting confidence intervals on an odds ratio or anything like that. If you were to do a chi-square test of independence with these variables right here, uh, what would happen is you would reject the null hypothesis, right? These, this is a very large sample size, and this is a pretty strong effect size. So that's really the test, right? The odds ratio just quantifies the strength of that effect. Um, cool. I mean, if you want to see that, <laughs> let's just do it. Might as well, right? Let's see if this works. 
Uh, oops. Uh oh, what just happened? Here, can I stick that there? Yeah. Uh, let me max this out. Let me. Cool. So, what am I doing? Where was the? So we have three five five three one four zero one four zero two five zero seven. So three five five two one four zero. What was it? Or three one four zero one four zero two five zero seven. Man, I'm on a. What do we got? One four zero two five zero seven. One four zero two five zero seven, and we'll do a matrix uh, by row. All right. Oops. Hello. I'll just do actually in row two. Oops. And we want by row. Is that right? Three five five three one four zero. Up oh, three one four zero. Sorry, y'all. I'm I'm lagging today. This is. <sighs> cool, that should be it, right? And then we can just stick this thing. We'll save it as this thing. And we'll just do chi test this thing. And yeah, you betcha. Uh, super significant, right? So there's definitely a, a, an association here. We can reject a null hypothesis of no uh, association for sure. Uh, so anyway, that was <laughs> totally unnecessary. Just wanted to show you. Uh, cool. Um, and this is, so this lecture, right, is, is totally just uh, an extra thing, uh, if you're curious. And this is even more extra, right? So if, if you're curious about putting a confidence interval on an odds ratio, uh, tune in for the next minute. Otherwise, don't worry about it. But I just want to show you, because it's kind of cool. And it's in the textbook, so I figured I'd talk about it. Um, it's really neat because the sampling distribution, right? You know the sampling distribution for sample mean and things like that. Well, the odds ratio has a sampling distribution too. But what's cool about it is it's approximately normal if you take the log of it. So the log of the odds follows a normal distribution. Um, and that's really interesting. What's cool about it is it allows you to put confidence interval on your odds ratio, right? You can just use the normal cutoffs, the 1.96, negative 1.96. Uh, specifically, the log of the odds ratio is normally distributed, the sampling distribution, right, is normally distributed with a mean that's equal to the true log of the odds ratio and a standard error that's equal to the square root of one over each of the cells added up. So let me show you that. That's the standard error. So one over, you know, the number in the first cell plus one over the number in the second cell and so on and so on. Problem is, you don't want a 95% confidence interval for the log of the odds ratio, right? That's confusing. It'd be better to convert it back into just the odds ratio. So to do that, we just exponentiate. Um, and when I say log here, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the natural log. Uh, so we'll do e to the log odds ratio to get back to the odds ratio and so on. Um, cool. So we can compute this, right? So in our previous example, the odds ratio was 2.018, right? And so we can take the natural log of that, and that ends up being 0 0.702. We can compute our standard error, right? Just do the square root of 1 over, or the inverse of each of your cell counts summed up, right? So 1 over 355, 1 over 3140, 1 over 140, 1 over 2507. And that's your standard error, if you take the square root of it. Um, cool. So in order to get your confidence interval uh, for the log of the odds, just take uh, your log of the odds minus 1.96 standard errors and the log of the odds plus 1.96 standard errors. That's your confidence interval, but it's, it's, it's the log of the odds. It's the confidence interval for the log of the odds. So the confidence interval, you can be 95% sure that the true log of the odds is somewhere between 0.5 and 0.904. But that's, you know, log of the odds. Let's just put it back on the, on the odds ratio scale, right? So we can take, just exponentiate every part of this inequality, right? So e to the 0.5, e to the log of the odds, e to the uh, 0.904. So now we have a 95% confidence interval for our odds ratio. Uh, 
so we can be 95% sure that this interval captures the true odds ratio. So it's somewhere between 1.65 and 2. You know, 47, something like that. Definitely positive, right? So there's definitely an effect of smoking on myocardial infarctions, uh, a positive effect, right? So anyway, that's just all extra stuff. In case you're curious, it's pretty neat, um, and it's a bit of it's a bit of math, and you have to flip things around, but it's it's not that bad once you see it a couple times. Uh, what else? Cool. So. Uh, if you're looking in the course packet, check out chapter 9 if you want more practice with, with odds ratios. What I want to talk about now, though, is something that you typically don't get in biostats, but I think is really... Oh, hello. There I am. Uh, something that's really important to... How do I turn that off? Something that's important to see uh, in biostats, right? Because a lot of y'all are pre-meds, and this stuff is like bread and butter of, of medical journal articles being able to interpret risk ratios uh, and things like that. So risk ratios are actually much easier than odds ratios. Um, instead of, it's just a ratio of probabilities, right? So an odds ratio compares two different odds. A risk ratio just compares two different probabilities. And people have a much easier time thinking about probabilities than they have thinking about odds. Odds are confusing. I can't, you know, odds are really, you have to slow down and be like, wait, what does this odds ratio mean? What are odds, right? Um, a risk ratio is much easier for people to interpret, right? So we might compute the risk ratio for myocardial infarctions uh, if you're a smoker versus if you're a non-smoker. Well, how would we do that? We can just compute the probability of having a myocardial infarction if you're a smoker. So 355 over uh, 3495. That's just, out of all the smokers, how many have myocardial infarctions? 355 over the total, right? And that probability is 10%, right? So 10% and change of smokers have myocardial infarctions. Then you do the same thing for non-smokers, right? So given that you're a non-smoker, so out of all the non-smokers, so 2647, 140 of those 2647 have myocardial infarctions, right? So 140 out of 2647 is just about 5%, right? So we can compare these two probabilities. We just divide one probability by the other, right? So you don't have to do that one minus the probability thing, right? It's not an odds. It's just the probability. And here it's pretty similar to the odds ratio. If you divide about 10% by about 5%, you end up with about 2%, right? A little bit lower here. So we can say that people are almost twice as likely to have a myocardial infarction when smoking than when they don't smoke. Um, or if they're a smoker, you know what I mean. And in this case, the relative risk, or the risk ratio, you can call them, it's always abbreviated RR. You see it, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's always that abbreviation. Some people say relative risk. Some people say risk ratio. When you're dealing with risk, you're dealing with uh, probabilities always. Um, so in this case, the disease is kind of rare, right? So overall, not that many people have myocardial infarctions. Um, and when that's the case... You, it ends up happening that the odds ratio and the risk ratio tend to agree pretty closely. Uh, so why am I even talking about it? What's the, what's the point? Why don't we just use one or the other? Um, well, sometimes they disagree, and that can happen if the disease is somewhat more common. Uh, and what can happen is the odds ratio might lead you to believe there's a stronger effect uh, than the risk ratio actually implies, right? So like, you know, an odds ratio of 30, that doesn't mean you're 30 times more likely to get the disease, right? It means that the odds are 30 times as great. That's not the same thing, right? So here we can interpret this. This 1.92, this risk ratio, we can say, yeah, we can use the word likely here. People are almost twice as likely to get the disease, right? They're 1.9 times as likely to get the disease if they're a smoker than if they're not a smoker, right? You can say, ah, where are my fingers? Likely, because we're talking about probabilities, right? Likelihoods. Odds are not probabilities. You couldn't interpret odds the same way. You always have to say the odds are twice as great or something like that. Let me show you what I mean. Uh, and here's another case of uh, a, a published paper that misinterprets something. So odds ratios, right? They're confusing. They're hard to interpret. I want to give you a uh, an example here. So 
here's the claim from this paper. And this is, a, you know, published in a great journal, peer-reviewed, all that good stuff. Um, and and the, this was just one minor part of the paper. There are a bunch of other things going on in this paper. Uh, but the claim is that members, so this was all about uh, psoriasis treatments. And so if you're a member of a support group, I think it was psoriasis, some sort of skin condition. And if you're a member of a support group, uh, they were testing whether, they were looking at whether you had heard of treatment, like you had heard of a certain kind of treatment or you hadn't heard of treatment if you're a member of a support group or if you're not a member of a support group, right? And when you look at this, you can see that, yeah, lots of members have heard of the treatment. If you're a member of a support group, you're way more likely to have heard of the specific treatment. But if you're not a member, you're not likely to have heard of it, right? There's more people who haven't heard of it than there are people who have, right? If you're a non-member. Um, but their claim is that members are 20-fold more likely to have heard of a topical vitamin D derivative treatment, right? So that's the treatment in question here. Um, is, is that true? Oops, hello. So what I want you to do, think about this. They're using the word likely here, right? So they're talking about probabilities. They're using the language of probabilities that, you know, it's, it's good. It's good to report probabilities. What they should be reporting here is the risk ratio. What do we get when we calculate the risk ratio, though? So use this data, take a minute, and just calculate this risk ratio, the probability that you've heard of treatment, uh, given that you're a member, over the probability that you've heard of treatment, given that you're a non-member, right? So 258 out of the uh, 289 members have heard of treatment, so that's your numerator, right? And then for non-members, uh, only 47 out of 185 have heard of treatment. So that's your denominator among the non-members. So the risk ratio ends up being 3.5. 3.5? But they say 20-fold more likely. They say members were 20-fold more likely. No, members are only 3.5 times as likely, right? What are they talking about here? What do you think is causing them to... to, to where's this 20-fold coming from? It's the odds ratio. So in this situation, go ahead and compute the odds ratio and see what you get. Ah, I shouldn't show it to you. Well, you can always pause it, whatever. The odds ratio, right? The odds that you've heard of treatment, we can just use our shortcut here. We can do 258 divided by 47 over 31 divided by 138, right? And again, only do this if you know what you're doing because that shortcut can sometimes lead you uh, <laughs> someplace you don't want to go. If you were doing the full thing, you'd take this numerator over one minus that numerator divided by this denominator over one minus that denominator, right? And it'll just boil down to 258 over 47. Uh, I'm sorry, yeah, 258 over 47 and then 31 over 138. That's your odds ratio. And that is quite large, right? The odds ratio is much bigger. The odds of having heard of treatment given that you're a member are 24 times the odds of having heard of treatment given that you're a non-member but you can't interpret that as, as a probability. It is completely incorrect to say that members are 20 times as likely to have heard of a topical vitamin D treatment. No, they're only three and a half times as likely to have heard of that treatment. If you're gonna use words like likely, everybody interprets those as probabilities. With odds ratios, you have to be very specific and say the odds are X times as great in one group as they are in another group, right? So that's the moral of the story. And again, the only difference here, one of these is comparing probabilities, the other is comparing odds. You have to talk about them in their respective senses. You can't interpret an odds ratio as a ratio of probabilities. That's bad news. And in this case, it allows you to grossly overstate the magnitude of the effect, right? This is not a probability. It's a ratio of odds. They should have said what? Members were three and a half times as likely to have heard of a topical vitamin D treatment if they were in the support group. I'm sorry, members of a support group were three and a half times as likely uh, than non-members to have heard of this treatment. Yeah, anyway, big difference, right? And it's, uh, yeah, so just sort of word to the wise and, and kind of a cautionary tale. Uh, awesome. So that's enough for now. I just wanted to post this extra video because I feel bad about not, uh, you know, not getting to talk about it in class. Uh, so just in case you wanted to, to think about risk ratios versus odds ratios, really, 
I mean, they're very, very similar, right? Uh, one's a ratio of odds, the other's a ratio of, of these probabilities. Um, cool. You, you, I'll never ask you anything about risk ratios. Uh, I, you, I won't test you over it or anything like that, right? Um, it's not something that is typically talked about in biostats, and I, I'm supposed to stick to the, you know, stick to the, uh, the official curriculum and all that stuff. But anyway, uh, cool. I hope at least a couple of you find this marginally interesting. All right, y'all. Uh, I gotta take a nap or something. I'm dying. Ah, uh, I'll see you later. Bye. Oops, wait, that's not how you end it. How do you end this? Bye.